And now, live from Level 5 Productions on the island of Milleronia, it's The Larry Miller Show! Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and everyone who really wants a great donut. Hi, folks, and welcome back to The Larry Miller Show. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And, well, we are. We're especially happy today. The Colonel and I are especially happy. He's back from a trip I'm going to tell you about. And... It's, it is that music. It just makes me happy every week, every time we do it. I appreciate that you, because of the Colonel's trip, that you uh, listened to one of our good reruns last week. And thank you. But we are back in business now. And we are back in the studio. We're not on Milleronia today. We're back on the mainland. But I'll tell you about that in a second. And first, I must, I must applaud that music. That's, of course, the... Bruce Hershober Orchestra, and the Pamela Zaslov Dancers, featuring boy tenor William Lucking, asking the musical question, do they serve kale on Milleronia? If so, do they make it taste like something a human would want to eat? Well, no. No, we don't. William, it's a good question, but we we almost did. We almost served kale. And by the way, I was in favor of it. There's a dish that I'm very fond of called charred kale salad, and it's not hard to make. Uh, there was a lady who was very interested in this, very interested in opening, well, getting a kale dish at our local restaurants, uh, Miller's Place, and uh, which is very popular. And uh, she started a committee that really got a lot of interest. And uh, she was, uh, well, she was moving forward quickly. And uh, that charred kale salad, she was very good at making. She holds a fistful of kale in each hand, and it cooks very quickly as I pushed her into the volcano. It really, really does a nice job on the kale. And by the way, you may be surprised to know that the kale lasts far longer in the volcano than the person holding it. And afterwards, I made a nice lunch a nice lunch salad for the caretaker of the volcano and myself. And I put several things in it I like, scallions, cucumbers, you know, and, oh, uh, uh, radishes. and uh, But you know what, by the way? No matter what you put in it, the truth is it's hard to get the taste of the melted human out of your head. And uh, even for me, and I love the volcanoes and I love being harsh with the verdicts on them, and uh, I think it's I think it's the right thing to do, but you know what? It took the, the well the taste out of it, and so there's I must say there's probably still interest in kale on Milleronia. But given what happened to that chef lady with the big mouth, it's probably going to take a while to get folks interested in joining that committee. So, good question, William. When we do have it, which will be I think by the way, and I'm just asking the colonel here as well, I think we'll have it within five or six hundred years. And uh, that's not, I'm just, that's when I think we're going to have it. But uh, we don't have it now, and probably won't be for a long time. And by Amazon, still the greatest company in the world to me. They do three things no other company does. One, you can order anything and they'll get it for you. Whatever you can think of, whatever you can imagine, they'll get it. Two, they already have it. They don't need to order it to make it, to ship it. They, they, they have it in a giant warehouse, the ones where they have from the Indiana Jones movies, the ones that go, oh, a mile that way and a mile that way and a mile up and a mile down. And uh, they have everything. And, and three, the most important part, they send us a percent a percentage of whatever you order. Whatever you want, they send a percentage of that here to me and the colonel at the Larry Miller Show. And uh, we send that immediately. We put it right in 
to the big iron box that we used to save for our next big fancy fried chicken dinner and two drinks beforehand in a different place. And yes, we're looking forward to our next one, which will probably be close to, well, the end of the year, to the Christmas time, New Year's area. And, uh, and yes, in case you're wondering, we may, may, might invite the doctor to go along with us again. Dr. Chris, he came with us last time to Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles, which I'm telling you is terrific. They're not a sponsor here. They were terrific for our big fancy fried chicken dinner with two drinks beforehand in a different place. And they, I stopped in a couple of months later just because I had to. It was delicious. It got in my head. I was driving past it, and I said, and there was a parking space right in front. Come on. That's that's the whole restaurant saying, let's go, buddy, right now. And I did. But uh, in any case, you know what? Dr. Chris might be with us on that one. And uh, with Amazon sending us a percentage of whatever you order, we'll get there in good style. So uh, if you want the, uh, by the way, to know how to get in touch with Amazon, do not, do not go to them on your own computer, on your own laptop, on your own iPhone, on your own anything else. Come to us, to our website, LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. <laughs> that last note really got me there. <laughs> you come to our website, and we have a banner that says Amazon. And you click that banner, and then you click... Take the best nap you've ever had. Go right to your big, gigantic, lazy boy chair. Put it back. Open up a magazine and put it over your face. Take a big sip of the big drink you made yourself beforehand and take a nap. Because we'll get you to Amazon. The Colonel and I, doesn't matter if it's the middle of the night, we will get that red light flashing on our Amazon phones. And we get up and go right to the studio. Whether it's on Milleronia or here on the mainland. We will get there. And by PayPal. PayPal, oh, what a good group. PayPal is, make you you feel like you're saving the world, folks. PayPal is a terrific group. And you know what? They have, well, they have a banner on our website, too. They have their PayPal banner on our website at LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that poor saxophone player gets me every time. Holy mackerel. Sounds like he just had a kale salad, by the way. Chart or not, when we heard that that lady met her just desserts in the volcano there. But, <laughs> so click the banner that says PayPal And you know what? Uh, We appreciate it. Every little bit helps us to keep the old leg lamp lit. And thank you to everyone who has contributed already. And uh, it, it really makes a difference. So, you know, if you enjoy the show, and why wouldn't you? And you want to send us a few bucks to help out, and why wouldn't you? Do it through PayPal. And uh, instead of saying, you know, I don't like the, the the things that most of these groups do, well, donate this or pay what you like or join the Platinum Committee. I, I, I just like to say, buy us some drinks, okay, because it's a friendly way to do it. There are different levels, levels one through five, all the way up to... We're driving to Florida! <laughs> That was a terrific audience, not just for what we play for you, but that was a good show. Done by me. And by me, by the way, because you know what? Signed hardcover copies of my book, Spoiled Rotten America, are now for sale at store.comedyfilmnerds.com. That's right, store.comedyfilmnerds.com. And I think you'll be very happy because I uh, I loved working on that book. It sold really well when it came out. And 
It's to, it's funny and it's a look at life the way I see it, and I think you're going to be glad you did. So uh, thank you, folks. And uh, by the way, I've, I, it's worth saying this. I mentioned already we're not on Milleronia today because my wife is in Las Vegas. How many times you get a chance to say that? My wife is in Las Vegas. All the other writers she works with on her big television show, and it's a hit now, by the way, Casey Undercover, and all the writers decided to go to Las Vegas for two nights. And the colonel and I were just chatting about it before going on the air, and we believe, I think, frankly, I, we've both always felt one or two nights in Las Vegas is about the perfect amount of time. That's frankly it. Uh, you don't uh, you don't want to you don't run into anyone who's been in Las Vegas for a week, or is going for a week. I go for a week because I go if I'm working there. I'm going to do a week's worth of shows, uh, but that's that's different from someone just going that because as as the colonel pointed out, no people go for a week to Orlando, or to Texas somewhere, or Chicago, or New York. That's a great place to spend a week, but if you're going to Las Vegas, one or in their case now, two nights in Las Vegas, is really just about it. It's it's the good amount of time. You can go to a show. You can go have, uh, well, a couple of drinks beforehand with all your friends there, your friends from work, and go to the show. And you can always have a couple of drinks there, too. And then after the show, well, you, you can get a couple of more drinks. And that's about the perfect amount of time. And then you're ready to say, why don't we try some gaming? I just love that word because that's what, well, that's what the folks call it in Las Vegas. They say we have, well, we have a whole committee about gaming. Well, you, you can't just say gambling or betting or, or something like that. Well, no, I guess they can't because they don't want people to, well, they don't want people to notice or realize or actually understand that they'll be, well, chances are, they'll be leaving a tremendous amount of money. That's what that saying comes from. What happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas, like your money. But you know what? It's 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 a wonderful place. It's a wonderful, fun thing to do. And I love being part of the shows that, that people see there. And you know what? Try that yourselves, folks. So my wife is in Las Vegas. She has one more night there. And I'm here now at Stately Miller Manor here on the mainland in Southern California. And, uh, well, Colonel Jeff doesn't have to take any helicopters to get here. He knows the way. And our guards in the towers, in the turrets, yes, they're there. They know how to let the colonel in. And our doggies, who are in the studio with us now, by the way, I don't want to wake them up. Because they're, they're, well, they're just relaxing and sleeping so peacefully. And so, you know what, though? My wife will be back, and we'll see. But maybe she'll be uh, bring a souvenir for the kids, or for me, or for the doggies. It's always fun to bring doggies or something. They love to get souvenirs. I'm not sure they exactly know what the concept of a souvenir is. But they know that you've brought them something that you did with affection for them. So uh, do that, folks. You know what? Amazon, PayPal, and my book. And that brings me to my favorite part of the show, the joke of the week. That's right, the joke of the week. And again, those boy, those bongo drums make me smile when I hear them. The joke of the week. It's a wonderful thing to bring. It's a wonderful thing to give to you, everyone listening, because folks, there's nothing better than a joke. A, a really good joke, even a great joke, is fun to hear and then fun to pass on. So if you like this, as always, please pass it on to your, your friends, your loved ones. And here it comes. A Polish guy walks into the eye doctor for an appointment. He goes through everything that the eye doctor has to do and then the eye doctor sits him down in that chair and points to the chart on the wall. And uh, the chart on the wall, the bottom line, says C-Z-Y-N-Q-S-T-A-S-Z. -S 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 and the doctor says, can you read it? 
And the guy says, uh, read it. I know the guy. <laughs> now, the colonel and I both like that one. That's a good example of just, oh, it's a silly joke. But silly is fine. Silly is fun. Silly is perfect for a joke. <laughs> That's just great. So uh, if you like that, please pass it on, and we'll keep it going. That was our joke of the week. And that brings me to the second favorite part of the show, The Poetry Corner. And here on The Larry Miller Show, our poems that I can read to you always make everyone happy. And it's perfectly explained and indicated by the theme song there with that string quartet. We please everyone from a string quartet to that guy with a bad cough. And that's what this poem is for, though. It's it's very nice. It's by Theodore Rethke, and I've read from him before an American poet born in 1908, and he died in 1963. His work is characterized by its introspection, rhythm, and natural imagery. He won a Pulitzer Prize for poetry in 1954 for his book, The Waking. Born in Saginaw, Michigan, he taught English at Michigan State and Lafayette College and Penn State and Bennington, and his last teaching position was at the University of Washington. He was great, and he's written one now that I'm going to read to you called In a Dark Time. In a dark time, the eye begins to see. I meet my shadow in the deepening shade. I hear my echo in the echoing wood. A lord of nature weeping to a tree. I live between the heron and the wren, Beasts of the hill and serpents of the den. What's madness but nobility of soul At odds with circumstance? The day's on fire. I know the purity of pure despair, My shadow pinned against a sweating wall. That place... Among the rocks, is it a cave or a winding path? The edge is what I have. A steady storm of correspondences, a night flowing with birds, a ragged moon, and in broad day the midnight come again. A man goes far to find out what he is. Death of the self in a long tearless night all natural shapes, blazing unnatural light. Dark, dark my light, and darker my desire. My soul, like some heat-maddened summer fly, keeps buzzing at the sill. Which I is I? A fallen man, I climb out of my fear. The mind enters itself, and God, the mind... And one is one, free in the tearing wind. Isn't that nice? Good for you, Theodore Rethke. Gee, there's nothing like a great poet who uses words so beautifully the way he, the way he does. Boy, oh boy, that's a good find. I hope you like it, folks. And that brings me to my third favorite part of the show. M M M Triple M The Magic Movie Moment. Was still the greatest piano note at the end of it. And uh, folks, this is a terrific movie. And I've seen it oh at least a dozen times, maybe a lot more and it's from 1990. It's called My Blue Heaven, starring Steve Martin, Rick Moranis, 
Joan Cusack, Bill Irwin, Troy Evans, William Hickey, Daniel Stern. Boy, folks, the cast is perfect on this. I saw this movie, it was just a couple of days ago, and then I called the colonel on the phone, and I said, I think I have the good triple M for us. And he agreed. You know what? This movie doesn't have a false beat in it. I laughed out loud so much, and the cast sells it, is it, beautifully, perfectly. The way they shoot everything, the way they edit everything. Troy Evans is a friend of mine. I've worked with him before. You you recognize him. He's been in so many things. And William Hickey is great in everything. You'll recognize him in a second. And Daniel Stern, also been in everything. Bill Irwin, boy, oh boy. That Bill Irwin is so great. He's playing uh, one of Rick Moranis' FBI agent pals. Rick Moranis plays the FBI agent. And uh, it's just terrific, folks. Uh, please, if you haven't seen My Blue Heaven, see it soon. If you have already, watch it again. I laughed out loud at least two dozen times. And you're loving it, and it touches you. It makes you believe in everything that they're doing. Oh, the love, the commitment, the, the humor. Oh, it's just terrific. And the magic movie moment for me, there were many in this. But there's one, I think, that indicates it so well. Steve Martin, who's great at everything he does. He always has been. And Steve Martin is playing the, well, the Italian mobster from New York who's in the witness protection program now in uh, the small town somewhere outside San Diego. And by the way, it was written by Nora Ephron, a great writer, and her husband, Nicholas Pileggi. And the two of them did the same research for this, and they were interviewing the same guy, Henry Hill. And Henry Hill was a real mobster, and Nicholas Pileggi was writing the script for Goodfellas, which you may have seen, a terrific movie. And, well, his wife, Nora Ephron, interviewed Henry Hill, too, because she wanted to write this one, and she did. Boy, it's a great movie. And uh, Steve Martin plays a terrific mobster in it. And one of the scenes that made me smile and laugh and then also be touched by it, Steve Martin is in the supermarket, and he glances down the aisle with the frozen food section, and he sees Carol Kane. Boy, she's terrific in everything, too. And he sees her with the with the door open to one of the sections in the frozen food aisle there, and he's really taken by her. She's really looking beautiful, and she's wearing a, sort of a low-cut supermarket blouse. What else would you call that? That's a man's way to put it, I think. Yeah, it's perfect for buying groceries. And uh, But she looks great. And uh, Steve Martin comes down the aisle to her, and he says, and her, her, her back is turned, and he says to her, it's dangerous for you to be in this aisle. And she looks around and says, why is that? And Steve Martin says to her, "'Cause you could melt all this stuff.'" And the way he reads that, the way he performs it, as the colonel and I was saying, the word stuff is so funny, "'Cause you could melt all this stuff.'" The way he does... And, by the way, her reaction is... It's terrific. Her reaction is she kind of sighs a little. She's so taken with this character. Her character is so taken... Uh, that she just, oh, that's how touched she was. And she almost falls against the frozen food. But it's perfectly done. It's not overdone. It's just done right. And this character is great. Steve Martin calls his pal in the movie, the FBI agent, uh, Barney Coopersmith, played by Rick Moranis. And ah, Rick is great in everything, too. And Rick says, where are you? What are you doing? I've been looking for you. Where are you? And uh, and uh, Vinny, that's his name, 
uh, Vinny, the Steve Martin character, says, well, I met someone and we came up here to Reno. We just flew to Reno and we just got married. And <laughs> Rick, well, Rick Moranis asks him, you know, that uh, he asked him what you and I might ask him, which is, you got married five hours after meeting this woman? And Steve Martin says to him over, over the phone, it's okay. I didn't get married under my real name. And it's that's such a good moment that it seems to make some kind of sense to you and me too. And Rick Moranis winds up telling his colleagues, his comrades later at the FBI there, uh, what what happened on that call. But you know what, folks? That one moment in the frozen food section says these characters so well, it's dangerous for you to be in this aisle. Why is that? And Carol Kane reads it so well. Because <laughs> you could melt all this stuff. Oh. <laughs> it's a great movie, folks. Enjoy it. As I said, if you haven't seen My Blue Heaven, see it now. And if you have, if you've seen it 25 times, see it again. I loved it again. And you will too. And, uh, well, that brings us to sort of, you know, the story of the day in its way is Colonel Jeff's trip to visit his family in South Florida which is a nice thing to do, and you've done that, and I've done that, and uh, your family lives down there, and this is at the tip of Florida, and uh, that's actually not why he was going. He was going, of course, to see them and to stay with them, and he was going, though, because there's a particularly great donut shop right near them. He'd heard about it for a long time. He thought, you know what? I'm going there now. And he had called me up and said, I don't think we can do the show on our show day. And he said, because I'm going to be in South Florida. I'm going to be stay seeing my folks. And then he told me about the greatest donut shop in the history of the world. Now, by the way, donuts are an interesting thing. As you know, it says in the statistic books, we Americans eat 35 donuts a year on average. Every person, every one of us. Now, that's a lot. And it's an awful lot because I'm not crazy about donuts. I mean, I I think they're okay, but I'm not just smitten by them. I, I don't look to find a, a donut shop and... I I don't really care all that much, so I don't eat 35. I may, maybe have one or two a year, maybe, but maybe I don't even have that. So the point is, a lot of other Americans eat way more than 35 to bring it up to 35, because Colonel Jeff felt the same way. He normally doesn't eat donuts either. He and I don't eat donuts, but Dr. Chris doesn't eat donuts either. Not in his, well, he might. He he just might. But you know what, folks? 35 donuts a year goes up to, to 50 or 70 a year to, to get the number up to 35 with other Americans like me in it. And here's an interesting statistic. Canada. That's right. Canada. Every, Canadians eat more donuts per capita, per Canadian. And it, it's it's one of my favorite countries. I've worked there many times and... I absolutely love the Canadian people, but I had no idea. I guess they like their donuts. And you know what, though? that I'm telling you, a lot of Americans out there eat, eating their way just to bring our number up to 35. But it's a lot more than that in Canada, and we couldn't even find the number. It must be a lot. So you know what? Colonel Jeff was going to this donut place that he had heard of, and it's its official name is, well, it's called Abby's, but the official name is Abby's Donut Nook. It's in Port Charlotte, Florida, which is uh, way at the bottom of Florida there, right at the tip. It's near Fort Myers. And I love, by the way, when I was telling Colonel Jeff that every time I ever read something, it's near Fort Myers. Oh, the donut shop, you know, 
Yeah, but when things are made like Fort Myers, Fort Myers wasn't built to be a nice place near the donut shop. It was built, Fort Myers was built, well, a couple of hundred years ago. And, well, I'm guessing they needed the name Fort in it because everyone who lived in the area there pretty much wanted to kill them. And they pretty much wanted to kill everyone, so they killed them in the fort. But the point is, it near it was fine. By the way, it's fine with me. I'd rather we have the uh, the nice houses and the donut shops there than another killing ground. But I'm telling you, this is called Abbey's. By the way, it's spelled A B B E apostrophe S. So I asked Colonel Jeff, you know, maybe it's also Abe's. It's Abe's Donut Nook. Maybe it's that near Fort Myers in Port Charlotte. But you know what? I like that name, Abby's Donut Nook. And that part of Florida, by the way, as the colonel was saying, it's it's kind of swampy. It's, it's right on the Gulf Coast, and all the houses are on the water with little boat bays that come right up to the house. And uh, I said, oh, well, what, did you, what did you like there? He went there so much. He went to, well, Abby's Donut Nook so much that his family began calling him Donut Boy. That was his nickname, which is the kind of nickname that sticks with you. Once you get called Donut Boy, it's going to stay there a while. Uh, the colonel doesn't know exactly how many donuts he had there in that place. A lot. He agrees it was a lot. But... Let's be honest, in the world of wisecracking, smart-alecky nicknames that your slightly goofy family gives you, he, he thought that Donut Boy was actually a pretty good one. It is, isn't it? Donut Boy is, is a pretty good one. He'll take that one forever, and, well, he'll certainly have it again next time he visits them. I mean, you know, you're going to have that name is going to stick with you. Look, if your name is Bill and you visit your family and go to the local bar once or twice, your nickname is going to be Bill the Drunk forever. So either don't go to the bar or learn to love being Bill the Drunk. So I said to the colonel, I said uh, to Jeff, I said, uh, all right, well, what, what are the donuts there that you really liked? And he said, again, he underlined, they were fantastic. They were really, really good. They were so good, they were way better, miles better, miles and miles better than anything he's ever had or that I've ever had or that anyone's ever had. And I, wow, I, I liked hearing that. And I said, holy mackerel, because that's one of the reasons I don't go to donut shops. I don't look for donut shops. I, I'm just not crazy about donuts. The only one I ever got close to was Krispy Kreme which you've probably heard of. It became a national chain. And, boy, I was on a bunch of movies where for a while, six months or a year, more than that, where the big stars would order Krispy Kreme donuts be sent to the set. And it doesn't matter if this was on location. It could have been in northern Louisiana or it could have been somewhere in Wyoming or anywhere. They got Krispy Kreme donuts sent right to the set. And some of the folks there said to me, well, you got it. Look, you just got to have one of these. They're really something. And you know what, folks? These were donuts baked in the Los Angeles area and shipped, trucked, sent, mailed to the wherever we were shooting this thing. And I'm telling you, I never had a donut that good. I'm telling you that I you know, took a bite of one of them and I thought, holy mackerel, you're not wrong. This is really, really good. And everyone agreed that they're just terrific. But Colonel Jeff said they're not even close to Abby's Donut Nook. And he said that, well, his favorite one of them, you know, not the favorite, but he said one of them, he said they had a chocolate glazed with peanut butter filling. It's a creamy peanut butter, but I'll bet you a donut you can get chunky if you ask. But he said... Uh, he said that was really something. And when he says really something, he he's underlining these were so fabulous that you couldn't even believe it, that he couldn't even believe it. 
He didn't even know he was heading to the nickname Donut Boy, but he said he had to have that. It's unbelievable. And his his real favorite, he thought maybe, was maple glazed. That uh, he said he couldn't taste anything really mapley about it, but he, he said it, he assumed it was like ordering ginger ale in a bar and getting half Seven Up and half Coke. I don't know if you've ever done that, but as a, as a bartender, I've poured them, and uh, that, that's 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 it. The owners didn't want to buy ginger ale, and you hear that trick or gimmick, and you say, "Well, I guess I could do that." I guess I could pour, well, half 7-Up and half Coke. But he thought that maple glazed donut was terrific, but his real favorite there was the plain cake ones. And I said, really, the plain cake? And he said, yeah, you know, he said, you know, if you really want to have a good donut, you're in a donut place. You're in a donut place you've been sent to. You're in a donut place you came cross-country just to go to. You're in a donut place where everyone says, these are the greatest donuts ever made. And if you go to a fancy pizza parlor that everyone tells you about, and you get a big slice with 12 things on it, you really haven't tasted the pizza, have you? And no, you haven't. What you have to do is you get a slice of pizza. You get a fresh slice of pizza cut off a, fra a pie, a fresh-baked pie, and you just eat that, the slice of pie, and with, with cheese and tomato sauce, a regular slice of pizza. Then you've had a slice of pizza there. And he said that's the way he felt about those plain cake donuts. He said, I love these all very much, but I can't really say I've had one until I get a plain cake one. And those didn't even have names to them. They're just called donuts. And these are the ones, I, I had it in my mind. I said, you mean the light brownish ones? And uh, they just, that's it? Light brown, but they don't have any sprinkles or anything? Just, he said, right, plain cake donuts. And I said, well, he said, fabulous. He said, even those were so good, it was loony. He said, you, you couldn't believe it. He said, I couldn't believe it. So that's kind of his favorite. But I said, how do you like that? Abby's Donut Nook in Port Charlotte, Florida, near Fort Myers. You know what, folks? If you're there, go there and let us know on our website. Holy mackerel. How are those donuts? I don't know really where to go. I think I've always liked Dunkin' Donuts, and I'll, I'll tell you why. That I don't, I don't. Well, I was uh, first of all, they're a terrific company. They really are. I think so. My wife thinks so too, and our kids think so. That Dunkin' Donuts, we always get their coffee in the supermarket when we go there. We get the whole bean coffee, or of course they grind it up too. But uh, Dunkin' Donuts coffee is really something, and. I was on the road once. I think this was in Washington, Washington State. I think it was in Seattle somewhere. But in the hotel we were staying in, it was right next door to a Dunkin' Donuts that was new there. And the Dunkin' Donuts itself had a private tunnel into the hotel. Well, tunnel is not, I mean, you didn't have to go. It was not, not like the Great Escape. But, I mean, you know, these things, this place had a doorway right from the hotel and one onto the street for others. But you know what? I thought, this is such a cool thing. And I, I went there a couple of times. I was only there for a couple of days. And I went to that Dunkin' Donuts because they also have great breakfasts. They have egg and cheese sandwiches in a roll or in a twisted thing. And I, you get one of those in a cup of coffee. You've really done something. And I, I was very impressed. And I, I they knew me. I was there four or five times in 20 hours. But I'll tell you what. I've always liked them. They're based in Boston and fully national, of course. And uh, my wife and I took our kids five years ago on a baseball trip. We took them to New York, 
And the four of us got a hotel room in New York. Then we went to two games at Yankee Stadium in a row, two days in a row. And that was the idea, to go to the plan, you know, make a plan like that. And uh, then our, right after that, we all uh, flew up to Boston from New York. And we were going to go see my son, the Marine, is a huge fan of the Boston Red Sox. And he always has been, since he was an infant, in fact. But we stayed at, we had a good hotel room there. And we went to two Red Sox games in a row. We had the best time. It was still, now I'm a Yankee fan, and but I was proud to wear a Red Sox cap there because it was one of uh, my kids' Little League caps where they go for big teams sometimes for their, well, for their mottos, for their for their themes. And I, a friend of mine, Lenny Clark, whom you would know, oh, is a great comedian and a great actor. And uh, he walked us around. He gave us a, a tour in the daylight hours of uh, the games were afternoon games anyway. But we went there the first day when we got there. Lenny's been a friend for a long time. And we saw the stadium. You know, we could walk on the field. And I'll tell you what, Fenway Park is still one of the greatest places I've ever been. Now, I'm... I'm as big a Yankee fan as you could be. And this was when the new Yankee Stadium was finished and open. And I'm telling you, we got tickets. Oh, the reason I'm laughing is that, so I don't cry. Because uh, the, you, my wife said, I got us tickets. And the, this the section we're in has waitresses. So, you know, they come up. And when you first hear that word, I thought, wow, that's pretty good. It's not. It's really not at all, because uh, look, they're working there, and but at that point, you're just dealing with a woman who's another New York waitress, and she's not thrilled to be there, and she comes up, you know, with the, with the gum. Okay, what'll it be? What'll it be? Well, but I'm I'm at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Shouldn't it be a couple of things? And uh, and it really wasn't very good. And I'm I'm someone who wanted to love it there. And uh, I didn't, both days in a row. First of all, we waited online to see Babe Ruth. You know, was there the whole Babe Ruth section. We came early, a couple of hours early. And we stood on the line there for a couple of hours. And as we got up there, we were still, we were close. We're only half hour away now from, and they came, you know, and the, some of the, so the word went back, well, they closed it. It's, 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 uh, it's closed now, so there's no coming. I, what? What do you mean it's closed now? I came with my family to see it. Well, there's no closing now. We're not closed now. Why are they closed now? And there's no no explanation for this. Anybody want to say anything to me? Of, Gee, are they even going to make an announcement? Folks, we're sorry, but we're closed. Why? Why would you be closed? For the other... 9,000 people who've waited all morning to see the babe. And at any rate, and by the way, in terms of the food there at Yankee Stadium, they didn't have peanuts. Can you believe that at a baseball game? We asked for them. Asked the waitress. Yes, we'll have uh, two bags of peanuts, please. And she said, we don't have them. You don't have them. They don't have peanuts in the shell. Well, what do you mean you don't have peanuts? This is a baseball game, an American baseball game. And then maybe the worst thing of all, maybe you wouldn't mind, but I said, well, all right, let's start with a couple of Cokes. We don't have Coke, just Pepsi. And I nearly did a chimp flip in my seat of just, rah, rah, rah. you know, I just nearly f flipped over. And my kids and my wife feel the same way. How do you not have Coke at a ball game? I'm glad, I hope Pepsi makes a million dollars a minute there. I hope they... Hire a zillion people. I have nothing against them, but it's not Coke. Doesn't anyone know that? I know that. In any case, we went to Boston at Fenway Park, the best place I've ever been. And they had Coke. But what if the place is set up, I know it's been there a while. Heck, a hundred years or something? But, boy, folks, that Fenway, they have Coke and 
you know, the lines aren't so long for anything. You can walk out behind your seats and get a hot dog or anything you wanted. And it was good food, too. I mean, an amazing place. And I'm telling you this because part of why we went to Boston was to be on a duck boat. They have duck boats in Boston. Maybe you've heard about this, but they are old World War II boats that are now used. They have engines, so the wheels on the bottom, that used to be, I guess, on the ocean floor as they were about to let troops go. But now they drive around Boston. They have the drivers who give a tour as you go and they speak to you and It's not so big. I mean, it's about, I would guess, 50 people on it. And the guy we had was terrific. Our driver told a story about Dunkin' Donuts. And he said, because it's a member of Boston Company. And he said, uh, yeah, we got uh, Starbucks here, which he called, of course, Starbucks. So you got Starbucks here about every 100 feet, every block. And he... He was so naturally funny. He, was, he wasn't a kid. He was about 50, 60 years old. And he said, he said, yeah, you know, you go to Starbucks and they don't, uh, you got to spend three bucks for a, a cup of that bad coffee. And uh, and he said, uh, by the way, they don't give any, never gave a thing to the city of Boston. No, nothing, no, no baseball tickets for kids, nothing, nothing. Okay. And you still got to pay all this money for nothing. And he said, now, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and he was like, and he liked Dunkin' Donuts. He said, uh, you go there, the coffee's great. The donut's fabulous. The best donuts anyway, you know. And uh, he said, plus they give, uh, you know, they give 200 seats a year to uh, kids. You know, in, in Boston, they give uh, 200 seats in Fenway, a giveaway. And he mentioned five, six other things Dunkin' Donuts does for Boston. And for the children in Boston, it was all pretty good. But he, he was describing uh, Starbucks, nothing. Dunkin' Donuts, everything. And then, and then he just said, you figure it out. <laughs> Which I thought was one of the great East Coast things to say. You figure it out. We were laughing the whole way through. And he was very touched by that. Because uh, he had recognized me and he, and he said, I'm glad... You and your family liked uh, what I did so much. I said, buddy, you were great. I can't remember his name, and I'm sorry I can't, but, boy, he was terrific. And you know what? That's one of the times I said with my family, let's go get a Dunkin' Donut, and let's go at least try what this guy says. And he was, first of all, he was right. They're very good, and not magically great. I'm not saying that. But good enough to be able to say, hey, these are donuts. I'm not really a donut eater, but these are really good donuts. Coffee, terrific. And as those breakfast sandwiches I mentioned, very good. Then the biggest donut love I ever felt was, well, Krispy Kreme. And I I think you may know them. They went national too. They were They were so big, they were... Brought to the sets there, and I bit into a couple of those, and I thought, holy mackerel, this is really something. But I know one thing now. I know, folks, I'm going to get to Abby's Donut Nook in Port Charlotte, Florida, sometime, sometime. I wonder what Colonel Jeff's parents are going to nickname me about Bald man who needs to stop eating. (laughs) But you know what, folks? That Abby's Donut Nook sounds really good. And that's why I'm telling it. Because you and I know the same things. And by the way, if you have a favorite donut shop in your area, please write to us on our website. LarryMillerPodcast.com Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. (laughs) But write to us and tell us about your favorite donut shop nearby you. 
And you know what? You can help out fellow LMDSers to go there and feel they have a place to go that one of their lodge members already likes. And tell us about it on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Tell us about it there. And as the colonel said, you just write, at Larry Miller Show. So whatever else you're going to write, Facebook, at Larry Miller Show. Twitter, at Larry Miller Show. But let us know. And you know what? Maybe we'll raise that American average from 35 to 35 and a half. Maybe we'll really shoot up there. But I would like to see that go up. And I'm telling you, I can't wait to get to Abby's Donut Nook. I don't think I'm going to bother your family for a place to stay. But uh, you never know. I might. So, folks, thank you. We'll know about those donuts, too. You and I know the same things, as, as you understand. We know that Homer is Homer, and Pluto is a planet. And so remember, folks, as always, if you walked out of bed today and had a job to go to, and a home to come back to, and someone there who cares about you, folks, the game's over and you've won. And that's still the truest thing I know. Bring a box of fancy donuts home one night, and we'll see you here next time. <laughs>